Hello, hello. Um, I'm recording a lecture because many of you missed the lecture and I want to have a smoother lecture without math mistakes compared to what we had on Wednesday. Um, so we're going to uh, do the very uh, important chemical potential of a mixture and we're going to start, we had started last time um, with thinking about our solution lattice model. We've got pure A on a lattice. And remember the condensed matter lattice is completely filled of identical A's, identical B's. We're gonna mix them together. And on this lattice, they now can interact with each other, A, A bonds, B, B bonds, designated W, B, B, and also W, A, B, the bonds between the two different ones. The total number of uh, molecules here is N, which is the sum of the two. And for this, the configuration is uh, W is equal to one because it's pure liquid on lattice, W equals to one, and the number of configurations here, which we will use to calculate entropy, is given in the way that we've seen it written so many times for this kind of arrangement. We've already um, covered this. This is a little review. Um, and we showed that the delta S of the mixture, which is this of, of mixing, is the same as that of the mixture, which is equal um, to this. This actually shouldn't be with C's here. Sorry, K minus K times this uh, sum here, Na log X like log XA plus MB log XB and the delta S mixing because XA and XB are always uh, between zero and one. So this term is always negative. A negative and a negative is giving you a positive. It always drives mixing, okay? Um, and so we can think of our delta S mix over here, we can plot it as a function of the mole fraction and convince ourselves that it goes up to a maximum of log two here, uh, somewhere around uh, at x um, a point five, and so um, the the um, more equal your mole fractions, the more entropy you get from mixing. So this is uh, something just to kind of hold in your brain as a snapshot uh, to think about the importance um, of this in mixing. Um, what we want to do um, in this lecture is uh, derive the energy of mixing and then, uh, or just the energy of the mixture, use the energy of the mixture to calculate the free energy of mixing and ultimately the chemical potential. Um, all right, so we're gonna now need to calculate the energy of mixing. And hold on to your hats because um, the energy of mixing, we got to do a lot of algebra because there's a lot of different bonds and we're gonna have to calculate all of the individual energies of all of those bonds and add them all up. So the energy of mixing U is equal to um, the number of AA bonds times the energy of an AA bond. And I'm gonna uh, just write this here. This is the number of AA bonds in that mixture. And we already are familiar with this, plus the number of BB bonds. How many BB bonds do we have? Okay, so we're gonna get, our total energy is gonna be the energy of AA interactions times the number of those bonds. So this is the bond energy times the number of bonds, bond energy WBB times the number of BB bonds. But we're also gonna have some AB bonds and they have an energy associated with them. And what we need to do is um, in order to calculate our energy in terms of something we can do, we're gonna need to estimate what all of these different numbers of bonds are for our mixture. We need a model for the number of bonds. So the total number of bonds um, is MAA plus MBB plus MAB. And that's gonna be equal to 
the total number of molecules in the system times Z over two. Now, what, um, what, let's remind ourselves what Z is and why the total number of bonds, the total number of bonds, Why is that equal to the total number of molecules times Z over two? All right, so um, let's uh, draw a few of the molecules interacting with each other. So we've got an A, we've got an A, we've got a B. Okay, we can think of each of these as having, you know, they have Z uh, on the lattice, they have uh, Z closest contacts. So let me just quickly pull this down and remind us what Z is, um, Z is the number of closest contacts close contacts. And for purposes of drawing on the board, we're always going to have Z is one, two, three, four. Okay, and uh, just live with that. It's just, there's a lot of different ways you can do models and we're gonna use Z equals four because it captures so many of the features of what we need to know. Okay, so Z is number of close contacts. We're gonna live with Z equals four for right now. And so we can think of each molecule on our lattice as having um, a bond has to have something from A and something from the neighbor. And if the neighbor, and so we can think of each molecule as contributing half of that bond. Okay, so if we look here, um, A has a total of four half bonds that it can uh, can make, and so a total of two bonds. A, A can participate in two bonds and, and in four, uh, co contributing halfway on, on four of those bonds. Okay, so now um, if we go in, into this and we, we do an accounting, um, the total number of um, A molecule half bonds in our whole system would be equal to um, Z times N A because uh, there's Z half bonds and there's A N A total particles. So that's the number of half bonds. But the total number whole bonds would be uh, Z over two times N A because you can only have you know two equivalents of the whole bonds, and um, and then if we think about adding up everything in our lattice up there, we would um, have then that. We would have one, you know, the number of bonds we have a whole, you know, for we for um, an AA, we have a whole bond. Okay, so this is a one. And for an MA bond, for, for an AB bond, we'd only have a half. Okay, so let me make this a little better. Okay, so if we want to get our total number of A bonds, it's going to be Z over two times N A, and that would be um, M A A. Each of these contributes a half, so that'd be one plus half of the A B bonds because it can only contribute half a bond to B. So, um, so there we've done an accounting for the A. We can do the same thing for B, and uh, when we uh, do that, so we we now have accounted for this. We want to get rid of, um, we need to eliminate these. We want to eliminate these because we don't, you know, we can't write our energy in, in terms of these. So we want to eliminate these. We want to get expressions for them that let us pull them out of here in terms of other parameters. Um, so we can do a bond balance. Um, You want to eliminate all the um, bonds. Okay, so we have a bond balance. A 
uh, where we, we can now take this and write that MAA is equal to one half, just rearranging this um, equation here, CNA minus MAB. Okay, so all I did was um, rearrange this equation here to get this. And then I could do the same exact thing for B because they're, you know, symmetrical. All of this in B minus MAB. Okay, so we're part of the way there. But um, so now we've got an expression for MAA, MAB, BB, but we've got to get rid of this pesky MAB. How do we think about the um, a response? Okay, so what we can do is let's invoke um, something called regular solution theory. or the Bragg-Williams approximation. And these are really fancy names for something that's very, very simple and straightforward. And the simple and straightforward thing is that, okay, we've got our molecules on the lattice. Da, 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 da. Here's the lattice. Let's put some B molecules there. B, uh, what was I using? I forget what color I use. Let's just say that these are Bs, okay? These are B. Um, uh, is is random on the lattice. Okay, so B is just anywhere it wants to be on the lattice. It's not dictated by anything else but random probability. Um, okay, so, and, and again, this is just a model, right? We, we can make any model we want, uh, but this is uh, one, one that we're going to do because it lets us say then that the probability that a site has B on it is just going to be the fraction B, right? So it's just NB over N, um, and that's just equal to XB, which is 1 minus XA. All right, now... Um, if we go back and we think about our single A molecule, okay, so here we have uh, in the shadow, here we have our A molecule, and we can kind of think of it as having, as we said above, four sides. It's got four neighbors, so it's got four sides. So the average number of contacts It's going to be what? On the average number of contacts is just going to be NB over N, right? That's that's going to be on average how many of these sides would contact a B because that's the probability that a B is in one of those sites. Um, so uh, the average number of B contacts, oh, sorry, uh, the probability is NB over N, but it's got Z sides. So we've got Z sides. So the probability that any one side would be that, but we've got Z sides. So the average total number that can contact A would be Z, the number of sides. Again, Z equals four. So four sides times the probability that a B is anywhere in one of these. So that's the average number would be that any one individual A would contact. So then that gives you that um, uh, the number of bonds of MAB would be the average number that a single A would have. So this would be Z and B over N. So I'm trying to get the total number of AB bonds. So this is the average for one A, okay, and then we just multiply by the total number of A's, and there we have it, MAB, according to our regular solution theory, okay? So now um, we, can, we can also uh, uh, rewrite this um, as Z, times n, I'm going to multiply uh, this by n over n. Okay, why am I doing that? 
because I can then write NB over N is one minus XA, and then NA divided by N is XA, okay? So, so this is our final expression for M and Z, converted it into the XA's and brought this uh, N into the mix here. All right, so now um, we want to come back and we want to uh, insert this into the equation uh, there. And um, I'm going to pull the board down to do that. So I'm not going to do all the gory algebra. I'm going to give you the uh, result. So basically what we've done is we've written MAB in terms of N and XA, and these are things we're comfortable with. We didn't, you know, what was MAB? Well, it's this, okay? So we know all of these things. We have an expression for MAA and MBB in terms of this uh, creature here. So we can take all of that and substitute it back in to this equation here. Okay, so now we can do that and let's write out what U is. We're gonna leave our little picture of our bonds because it's really annoying to do the counting. You gotta really follow the bouncing ball. Um, okay, so we know what those are. Okay, so now, we're going to substitute back in, and we find that U is equal to um, Z W A A over two times N A plus Z W B B over two times N B um, plus. So you can think of these as obviously coming from the pure solution plus this um, term that has Z. W A B plus the which is the A energy of the A B bonds, W A A, oops, not plus, minus W A A plus W A W B B divided by two. This is the average of A A and the B energies. So the bond energies here, it's an average, you add them up and divide by two. So, so this term is really comparing the average of these bond energies to the bond energy of A and B. Um, and then this is all multiplied by Na and B over N. And you're welcome to go back and do all of that algebra um, on, on your own, if you like, because we've, we've gotten to this uh, form and it's, and it's a really uh, great thing. All right now, this um, term here uh, comes up so often, it, and it's an important term because it's comparing these kind of self interactions versus the non self interactions and thinking how many there are, with the Z there, that it's got its own name. So we define something called the chi parameter, and I'm going to do my best to distinguish it from the mole fraction, it's a script chi, and I'll try to make it sort of like a sled holding the AB because it's an AB interaction. It's defined as um, Z over KT times this uh, term WAB minus the average of those other two bond energies. Okay, and this is called a dimensionless um, exchange parameter, so-called exchange Okay. So let's take this in one more time. The energy of the mixture has three uh, contributions, one from pure A, one from pure B, and one from the interactions between A and B. 
And these are going to depend on, you can tell here, the mole fractions of A and B. These are ultimately get converted into Xa and one minus Xa. So, so this, this um, is really the driver for whether things are going to mix or not. And it's such an important characteristic of the interaction between A and B. It's known as the chi parameter that's called the exchange parameter. Um, let's take a little further pause and think a little bit about um, what that chi parameter physically means. And we're going to draw a little thought experiment about exchanging A, uh, a molecule of A, and taking it out of its comfortable home in uh, liquid A and forcing it to go into uh, to B. And I, I, I'm losing track of what whether I use fill or open for A and B. So just I'll, I'll write what they are. I'm going to call this one A. And I'm going to call uh, this one B. So we'll have A here. We'll have B here. And now I have a hole in the middle for a reason, because I'm going to take this A molecule out of its comfortable home where it was bonded here uh, with Z equals four um, contacts two bonds, uh, because it's got four half bonds, I take that A out and I'm gonna sling it in here where now it has to uh, create bonds with B. So this is B, okay, um, I'm gonna draw it there, but I'm gonna take the B that was out, because there's the A, it's gonna go there, so, I'm not, so I won't draw it, there would be a ghost. Um, so put the B uh, that, that it's displacing and we're gonna put that over here in the A. Okay, so we're exchanging. And you can kind of think about this like a reaction. Um, and the reaction is uh, we're taking a number of bonds out of this. We're taking, how many A bonds are we taking? Well, A has four half bonds or Z over, it, it's got Z half bonds. So it's got Z over two um, AA bonds. It's got, uh, right, so uh, Z over two. Um, and likewise, B is gonna lose, it has, it's uh, Z over two BB bonds. And they are uh, going to make um, Z uh, AB bonds. So it's like a reaction of taking those bonds and making a B bonds. And you know, because you've got Z over two and Z over two, so that ends up Z on this side. And um, so you can think about uh, two chi A B as being equal to something like an um, exchange energy. Exchange energy. And it's dimensionless, so it's divided by kT. Um, or another way, chi a b is equal to um, a minus log of a k exchange, uh, a kind of um, equilibrium constant for that exchange. So it's it's measuring: do they want to stay or do they want to go? Do they want to stay or do they want to go? That's the way that you can think about. Um, this exchange parameter is it's, it's like do you know how 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 much do they want to move into that um, other other microenvironment? Um, so um, usually um, you have the situation that AB bonds are weaker. Um, so uh, usually we have uh, that um, WAB absolute value is less than WAA plus WBB over two. This is um, usually the case, or uh, the other way, if we took the, because WAB is negative, so WAB would be bigger than, meaning more positive than. So if WAB is minus, uh, you, so, so if the average of this is WAB, plus WB, oh, sorry, WAA plus WBB 
over two. So if this was like minus 10, then this would be minus five. So it's weaker, right? Because all the W's are negative. So you can write it like this, or you can take the absolute value signs off and write it like that. <clears throat> it's just keeping track of the fact that it's negative and you know, it's a weaker bond if it's less negative. Um, all right, so we have um, gotten a long way toward our destination, and our destination is not just the energy, it's actually the free energy of this whole system. So combining the entropy, the energy, and then figuring out what's the change in free energy when we mix? How can we take the derivative of the free energy with respect to one of the components to get a chemical potential? So let's do those two things, and then we can call it an evening, uh, because it is evening here in Cambridge today, Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. Um, all right, so um, let's uh, write our energy expression. And I'm just going to combine, uh, let me actually, let's see what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna put energy expression here. We can erase this. Um, we have our, uh, I'm gonna leave our, um, that term there just for a minute, because we've got our energy term there, we've got our entropy term here. Let's get rid of all of this extra stuff. We're almost done, almost done, almost done. Almost there. Okay, so here's our entropy. It's always positive, yes, we know that. Here's our entropy term that we'll just leave there for now. All right, so what we want to um, write is we want the free energy of our mixture of the system, and the system is the mixture. And we know that F is equal to U minus TS. And so we're going to write this F and A. N, B, this is the components, two components, the so divided by KT. Um, and let's put the entropy uh, term uh, first. So we're minus TS, so that minus will convert to a positive. Um, and we've got our KT there. So we've got NA log NA divided by N plus NB log and B divided by N plus we have a, our energy term which we've got um, here and we're going to use the chi parameter instead of uh, writing it all out so this is the energy term ZWAA over 2KT divided by KT um, times NA plus ZWB over 2 K and T uh, and B. These are a pure solution. And then we have the contribution from our mixture, I, A, B, um, N, A, N, B, over N. Okay, so this is entropy. And this is the energy term. We can now do away with this because we have put it here. It's in there. All righty. Okay, so we are now positioned to do the last things that we need to do for wrapping up our conquering of this molecular model of the free energy of a mixture the free energy of mixing and chemical potential. We're there, we've got the free energy of the mixture. So now let's get the change in free energy, delta F mix, in going from a pure liquid A, liquid B to the mixture on um, the, uh, the, uh, 
the tape uh, the table. Okay, so let's just um, we can start with this. Okay, so if we take so delta F mix is equal to F mixture minus F pure, which is um, the A and the B. Okay, for the entropy term, the entropy of the pure state um, is zero. So this term comes through just as it is. So we're just going to uh, subtract off from this the uh, the pure, the pure, uh, so tell, yeah, let me, let me see, we're gonna, um, we're gonna subtract off, actually, let's do this, hold on, hold on, all right, so we're gonna, right here, we're gonna write F pure, the entropy term is zero, and the um, energy term is the uh, WAA over 2KT and A and uh, plus Z WB over 2KT and B. Okay, so that's F pure. So delta F mix is equal to the final state minus the initial state. So we would have Na log Na over N plus Mb log Mb over N. So the entropy term stays the same, but this minus this is zero plus, and so then we can come through uh, and we get plus I A B Na and B over N. Okay, so this is our delta F mix. And is it divided by KT? Um, yeah, it's, sorry, let me, let me get this all cleaned up here because I think we've got to have this uh, divided by KT. This is divided by KT and this is divided by KT. Let me just make sure everything is divided by KT. Because this is dimensionless. This is dimensionless. This is dimensionless because chi B is dimensionless. Yeah. So uh, T goes here. All right, sorry. Okay, so delta F mix divided by KT. This is dimensional, so yeah, so we're all good. Uh, actually, in KT. So this should be in a... Just a second, second. NKT. Uh, you know what I did? Um, uh, there should be an N. This has to be divided by N. You know what? I, okay, so this has to be divided by N. This has to be divided by N. I tried to write everything on the board. I'm doing a little different than is in the notes. Um, and, and so we can rewrite this in terms of all fractions. So it's divided by NKT, just looking for all my ends. So it's XA log uh, um, XA plus uh, one minus XA log of one minus XA, and then chi AB. Um, so this would be also divided by N. So plus uh, chi AB. And I'll, I'll rewrite this, one minus, uh, uh, X, uh, sorry, XA, one minus XA. I'm going to rewrite this, but I'm just kind of writing, I'll, I'll, I'll rewrite it so it's cleaner. But this is just converting this to XAs, because you have all your ends in here. So delta fix over NKT, we, we uh, just subtracted off the... Um, Uh, you know what I did? There's an N here. Oh, let me put the N. I, I'm trying to do it fancy on the board because we're constrained. We need an N here. I just write an N in all of these. N. Yeah, so now they're now they're the same because that, that uh, coming down here, getting it to N. Do an end here, so they're all the same. 
They're all the same. And all divide by n. Do you remember n? Just get them all with ends because down here I, I I wrote it at the bottom with the ends, so I'm just gonna go back and put the ends in there. All right, so we're we're good. Delta of x over n kt, dimensionless na over n and b over n, and then we get it in terms of the xas. So we're all good. All right, let's pause for a minute and think about what it means to have these different values of pi parameter. What does the pi parameter tell us? in terms of, um, we're gonna leave chi here. We're gonna erase some of this stuff. Almost done, we're almost done, we're almost done. Okay, so we can we can think about chi as, as giving us a hint about whether things will fit. So chi AB is less than zero. Things are going to always mix. And, and that's um, true because if you look at the energy of mixing, the change in free energy of mixing, you've got the entropy term, which is um, Xa log Xa plus one minus x. So the entropy term is always positive. Oh, sorry, always negative. The entropy term is always negative, so it's always going to contribute to a negative change in free energy. So it's always going to drive mixing. But this term, uh, and, and let me just rewrite it here so you can see it, delta F mix over NK T is equal to XA log XA plus one minus XA log one minus XA. That's the entropy term. And then plus this chi a b xa times one minus xa. Okay, so I'm, I'm rewriting it in case you can't really see it there. So delta f mix over nkt then, the entropy term is always negative. So you're always gonna get pushed toward mixing and it really depends on this value of chi, okay? So if chi is less than zero, this term is always positive because, you know, this is between zero and one, this is between zero and one, so that has to be positive. So this is negative, this whole thing is negative, and that means your free energy change is for sure gonna be negative, so you're always gonna mix, okay? If chi a b is greater than zero, there's going to be, um, uh, you know, some limited solubility, depending, you know, depending on how positive chi is. If, if you have uh, a little tiny chi and you're in a regime where one of these is really dilute, you'll get them to mix, right? So this term won't be all that strongly positive and entropy can win. Okay, so it's battling. Is the energy gonna pull us up above the delta F of zero or is the energy gonna keep us down below delta F zero? So it really depends on how big that chi is. But you've got a whopping huge chi and you're at a mole fraction of 0.5, you're not going to mix. And that oil water mixing problem that's on the practice problems is an example to get you to see how that plays out. Okay. But if chi AB is equal to zero, you have an ideal solution, like an ideal gas. And an ideal gas, there's no interaction energy between your particles. And an ideal solution, the interaction energies are the same for all. Uh, all of the interactions. So um, you, your chi AB is equal to zero. Or actually the average, the average AA, BB interactions are exactly the same as the AB interactions. That defines an ideal solution. So you're always gonna mix. Because if chi is zero, that term there is zero, then the whole thing is, is negative. All right? So, uh, we've got the energy of mixing. 
now we're at the um, heroic last step of wrangling with this equation. And then we're going to do a bunch of applications. So this is just the you know lunges and squats we have to do to go run our marathon, where we're going to run a beautiful course. There's going to be a lot of really great scenery on the way on that marathon. Um, and we're going to have a lot of fun, but the lunges and squats are to get us all ready for preparing us to uh, do all of those things that we want to do um, and out, out there. Uh, or maybe, you know, lunges and squats can prepare us to go surfing. That's another thing. You got to have some upper body strength for that too. So probably we'll do some push ups. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Last, last hurrah here. And believe me, I'm uh, as happy to be at the end of this as you are because it is now six o'clock on a Friday night. And, um, but it's really fun to um, do a little math, get you in the good frame of mind to go to bed. Okay, um, so now we want to do the chemical potential. And boy, did we love that. We just love the chemical potential because it lets us calculate equilibrium. And so um, we're going to divide the chemical potential by kT, so mu A over kT. That's dimensionless, right? So this is a dimensionless uh, form, is equal to, recall, it's the partial derivative with respect to one of the components. And we're going to pick A. A is always the favorite child. Um, so F over kT. Um, and it's going to be with uh, T and ND held constant, okay? And, and because T is held constant, it's just, you know, constant inside that, so it's, it's not freaking us out to have it in there. Um, okay, so now to take the derivative of F over KT, um, let's go back, and now I knew I could and get these on the different boards, um, but here's F... Um, over NKT. So let's let's get that in out of it. We, we need a bat. Let me just erase all of this other stuff. So we want this equation for F. All right, we want it with no N in here. So let's uh, let's just purify it here. Get all, rid of all the extraneous Ns. Do -do 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 that in there. This extra in here, this extra in there. All right. Here's our purified F over KT. All right. So if we're going to take the derivative of F over KT, um, I'm not going to do the whole thing because that would take forever. And you can do it on your own if you want, but I'm just going to show you how to do it. Um, you have to remember Na log, uh, I'm just going to do this one term, um, Na divided by Na plus Nb. So you're going to have to do some really, really good exercising of your chain rule uh, life. Um, I would rewrite this as Na uh, log Na minus Na log Na plus Nb, just because I really, <laughs> I can't stand having to do the chain rule on something like this, keep track of it all. So I'll just, now let's do the derivative of this. So let's focus on this one. So we would have Na times the derivative of log Na, that's one over Na plus log of Na times the derivative of Na, which is one. Okay, so that's the derivative of that. And you could go in here and do the same thing. <laughs> Na times the derivative of this, which would be one over that, which is N. And then you would have log uh, plus log of N. This is Na plus Nb is N times the derivative of that times one. Okay, so you can see how you can do the chain rule and get all of this, but the trick is, and the book doesn't really go into this, you gotta remember that N is Na plus Nb, so that there is, you gotta take the derivative of that with respect to Na. 
All right, so if we do all of that, we've got all of this chain rule stuff that we're doing, we're gonna take all the derivative of that, um, and I'm sorry, this should be F over uh, KT. So KT, uh, I'm going to be excited there. All right, so we're, we're going to take the derivative and we're going to get the chemical potential. So we're going to do all that chain ruley stuff. And when we do it all, we get um, a beautiful result of log XA plus uh, ZWAA over 2KT. KT plus chi AB times 1 minus XA squared. All righty, three terms, three terms. What do they mean? What do they mean? What do they mean? Okay, so let's rename them. Okay, so mu A, um, and let's multiply through by the KT, um, is gonna be, uh, actually I'll leave the KT down here for a minute. I'm gonna leave the KT just because it makes it easier. Um, this term is going to be something called mu a zero over kt or mu a naught. And what you can see is this is the chemical potential of the pure phase, ZWAA over two. So that's the chemical potential of pure A. So this is pure A. This is the pure A chemical potential. And we're going to call it that to point that out because we're really tired of writing all that stuff there. Okay, and then we're going to, we've got our um, entropy term here, the log of XA, but let me uh, leave a little uh, gap here because we're going to define something. We're going to take the, the um, weirdness of those, you know, A, B, B, B interactions, and we're going to call the activity coefficient now it's not the surface tension chalk is running down okay so it's not the surface tension even though it's a gamma and the book did this i'm sorry about that the book used gamma for both the activity coefficient and the surface tension. So gamma is going to be equal to e to the chi a b times one minus x a squared. Okay, and so we are going to um, we're going to take this term. So we're going to Move, move the gamma. Um, we're going to move. We're going to define this so that we can put this here. Bring that into the log term. Do I need another KT? No, no KT here because this is um, okay. And and so this captures the non-ideality of AB interaction. So an ideal mixture gamma is one. Okay, some things are close to ideal, but most mixtures are not ideal. And this captures the non-idealities non of the AB interactions. And so we can uh, simplify this if we want by just writing mu A is mu A, which is multiplied through by KT, plus KT log gamma A X A. Okay, so there you have the chemical potential of component A when it's in a solution with other things. And on your homework, um, you're asked to go through and do the same thing for a ternary mixture. So enjoy that algebra. It's gonna be fun. Um, but I think you'll learn a lot from trying to do that. So uh, thank you for uh, bearing with us through all of this um, algebra and moving things around. We have got our molecular model, we mix everything together, we've got our chemical potential, and now let's go do some fun stuff with the chemical potential for the rest of the term. Thank you.